Uh, let, before we start, let me just say that we're all wearing these cute little Santa robots today. Those come from the Lester Pearson High School Robotics Club, uh, merging art, creativity, and innovation, and they're selling these as a fundraiser as they go off to a national or maybe international robotics competition. Now, with that. Um, yes. What was uh, Lucas can too, <laughs> probably. Uh, what was the uh, what stuck out the most from what Ms. Kennedy said with regards to what happened in the election? You know, I'm really glad that we're doing a reasonable look at what happened here. We had the highest voter turnout in decades and decades, which is great. That's exactly what council told Elections Calgary to work on, and I'm really happy about that. And I know that we can be assured that the election was fair and that it was by and large run well. However, there were some glitches in the last three hours of voting, uh, particularly around distribution of ballots, and I'm very confident that they're going to fix that problem. No. You've been threatening to fire him for seven years. Finally, I succeeded. I succeeded, finally, yes. You know, it's a tough job. It's a relentless job. Uh, it's seven days a week. You work for the most demanding boss in the world. Uh, and he really not just redefined that role for the city of Calgary, but redefined what the role of a political chief of staff is. Uh, and has made tremendous, tremendous contributions to this city and to the citizens of this city. So I'm very sad to see him go, um, but I'm very excited for him as he seeks out new opportunities uh, for himself in the private sector. And before you ask, no, it's not what you think. Uh, and we can uh, really wish him well and have a great debt of gratitude for the work he's done for the citizens of Calgary. So it's not the Alberta Party? It is not the Alberta Party. When did he tell you? Uh, I've known for a little while now. Uh, he and I have been talking about this for years, in fact, and I'm thrilled that we've been able to get to the point where we got, uh, because he really has done extraordinary work for the citizens of Calgary. And, you know, I got to go to work every day with my best friend. Not everybody gets to do that, so that's been wonderful as well. You called this the day of departures. There are a few others, um, and, you know, there was a question about Mac Logan. But you hadn't, haven't had much to say about his departure. Uh, normally, you know, for someone in that level, you would have given a little shout-out uh, of accomplishments. What's, That's a fair point. I guess I didn't do that. Yeah. So would you like to now? <laughs> You know, let's just say thank you as well uh, to Mr. Logan for the great work he's done uh, spearheading a lot of very big transportation projects in the city, but not just transportation projects, city building projects. Uh, that leadership was really made a big difference to citizens in Calgary. Do you have anything to say about his approach? Do you really do? I think I do. No. Can you comment whether he was suspended? Was he on a uh, as you know, as you know, I cannot discuss human resources issues, and in fact, I can just say that uh, the city manager and Max sat down and came to a mutual agreement that it was time for him to resign. Any other topics, folks? Speaking about midfield, I know the motion yes. has not obviously been spoken about, but why do you think there's been such a splash about a motion with so much CRC? I'm trying to find a polite way to answer that question. Uh, I think that it is very clear that you know some members of council who were not around for the initial discussions would like to have a discussion about what happened there and what is possible there. Now given that there's just been a legal judgment, obviously we can't get deep into that without getting into legal advice, which means some of that conversation has to be held in private uh, to preserve risk or to mitigate risk for the city and also to treat, treat people decently because a lot of this has to do with people's homes and their lives. And so I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, but I also think it's the right thing to do for council to have a discussion about this. What about the, the CMLC stakeholder meetings and councillors are being critical of uh, Councillor Clark not attending or attending late um, to do a media availability about, about uh, Minton? Oh, it's Christmas. Why in the world are we getting into petty interpersonal things? Uh, certainly, uh, there were, I think, 10 or 11 councillors uh, at that CMLC shareholder meeting, and we had a very, very good discussion about the future of the Rivers District as well as of CMLC. Test your ability to talk a little bit, field. Would not any notion of increasing compensation be opening up for everybody who was there? What an excellent question. Any other your topics, folks? <laughs> That is, my answer is that is an excellent question and one that really should be asked. Maybe in the Rise and Report we'll learn more. Potentially you will. 
Uh, I will say uh, about midfield that, as you know, I actually didn't vote for the motion on midfield. And I actually welcome the opportunity to reopen the discussion to see if there are ways that we can be more fair and more helpful. And let's see where council goes with that conversation. Okay, thanks. Okay. What's up with midfield? The guy, Farkas, couldn't even get a seconder for his vote. Yeah, that is true. Uh, you know, there are always issues to discuss uh, on things like this, but there are also ways to discuss these issues, and I think that is what we learned today. So how should he have gone about it? That's a good question for him. Uh, you know, in my job uh, as traffic cop for council, I think I would have suggested bringing this forward without all of the media storm and frenzy around it so that the issue could be discussed without all of that uh, extra noise. Um, can you confirm whether the city has a plan for this land at this time? The city has no plan for the land at this time. I think there's been some early design work just to get it started, but there's no developer who has an interest, and I've said many, many, many times that land will be redeveloped eventually, but that is not the reason midfield is closing. What is your the message time frame for on that then? Sorry. Mm, I don't really know. I don't really know. There's there's certainly no rush. What's your message for the remaining people of midfield or any of the people that lived oh. or live in midfield? Once again, as the judge pointed out, people have been treated far beyond what their legal requirement the legal requirements of the city were. Um, but our commitment is to work with each person to make sure they've got a safe, decent place to go. In regards to that, when you say without the media attention and stuff, don't those people sort of fall in, you know, victims of all what's happening? You know, that's the, the part that I find very difficult about this because I don't believe any member of, any member of council is attempting to exploit or use these folks. I really don't believe that, but I think that that could easily be the interpretation. And fundamentally, we have folks, there's about seven, families left, and we have a duty to those families to make sure they've got somewhere decent to go. So would not greater transparency in this process do away with any questions or conspiracy theories about what's actually happening? I think there's been extraordinary transparency in this process. I don't think there's a thing that the city has done that is not out there. There's a big website. We certainly have had people on site every single day to meet one-on-one -on -one with these residents for years. Uh, I can't imagine how you could be more transparent about it. Right? With a $90 million fund, yes. just talk about that for a minute, so the next steps where they come forward with the governance structure, Correct. what do you want to see in that? I think it's going to really have to have a balance between making sure there's good oversight, but also making sure that the fund can be nimble and doesn't require going to committee and going to council and the very long, laborious council process. And I think there's a good way to strike that balance. And do you expect that we'll hear repeated requests from these guys for more money for the fund? Let's see how the first batch goes. Does council have any say if there's a really big single ask? You know, probably I would guess that what would come out is certain tranches where some things can go through one approval process. If it's more money, it goes through another. If it's a third, it might go through another, which may involve council. But given, like you said, the need for speed, potentially, I don't know, we want 25 million of that development for one thing. Yeah, if it's something that big, I imagine council will want to have something to say about it. But you guys will act quickly as opposed to your normal ways. We'll try. <laughs> all right, thanks everybody. Thanks. Merry man. Christmas to you all. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here all week, but hopefully nothing will happen that requires me to talk to any of you. <laughs>